Okay, welcome back to class. Today we are learning how to make a slab mug. Slabs are the best way to make mugs. They make mugs with really smooth and even sides. So anytime you're making a mug, your goal with that is to make a cylinder that is even thickness all the way up top to bottom and that is the size and shape you want. Now, I like a big mug and so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna build a paper copy of the mug that you wanna make. Now, this looks huge, but the clay that we're using, B-Mix, shrinks about 10%. And so this is gonna be a pretty good bug, but it's definitely gonna shrink down significantly. And so keeping that in mind, I wanna make sure that my paper model is big enough to have the size of mug that I want. Another thing to think about is you need to plan to have an interesting handle. Um, one of the nice things about a handmade mug is that uh, you can look at it and see that it's handmade. And so the thing you wanna do is have some sort of interesting or distinctive handle shape. And I like to think about how my hand fits in the handle and how I want to hold my mug when I am designing that handle. And so this is kind of the tentative handle that I have in mind for this mug, okay? So here's my cup. I built my paper cup. You can see it doesn't have a bottom on it because I can just trace it, okay? So I rolled my slab and I didn't roll it all the way down to the thickness of my um, dowels yet. And I'm using dowels with orange tips. That's the thickness I like for mugs. So now I have my slab mostly rolled out. I wanted to save a little space because I wanna make sure that the slab I'm rolling is gonna be big enough for the size of cup that I wanna make. So I'm taking my handle off, I'm gonna save that. And I have my paper cup model. Now you can see on this one I wrote out, it is five by 13 inches. If you want a big mug, five by 13 is gonna give you a pretty big chunky mug. So I wrote that out so I would remember it. So here is my piece of clay and I have my mug on top and I can see that my slab's already big enough so I don't have to worry about widening it too much. But one of the things I do wanna think about is I need to have a circle for the bottom of my mug out of the same clay. So I'm going to roll it with a goal of getting it longer so that I have the end of my, um, the end of my slab can be used to cut out my base. Okay, so I'm gonna roll that out. I'm gonna shift it a little bit because I'm looking at making my clay longer in this direction. Okay, so I'm gonna get more clay to either edge. Okay, so I'm looking at lengthening my clay and I'm getting in here and rolling with my whole arm so that I can get it the size and shape that I want. Okay, now. Something to think about when you're doing a mug is that leather hard clay holds its shape better than clay that is really soft because it's not as floppy. And so I want to think about smoothing this but not adding a bunch more water. So I'm going to get a rib. I'm going to make sure it's clean and ready to go. And I'm going to use that to smooth my clay so I'm not adding a bunch of water. I don't want to add a bunch of water, but I do want a smooth texture for the mug that I'm making. Okay, and so I'm going to periodically wipe my rib off so that I have a clean tool and I'm not making marks in my slab. Okay, so a nice smooth slab, just like that. And of course, anytime I use a tool, I'm gonna wipe it off before I put it back so it looks nice and clean and is good for the next time I wanna use it, okay? So I'm gonna take my hand and I always just kinda of wipe along my slab to smooth it even more. Make sure I'm not getting any little bits in it. Okay. So here's my slab. Okay. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my paper on here and I'm looking to get my whole slab and have enough left over for my base. Okay. 
I'm gonna give it one teeny tiny roll this way just to give myself a little more room to work with and a teeny bit this way. So you have to be careful if you're rolling and you don't have your little spacers down because it can get away from you. So I'm gonna smooth it one more time. And it is 100% worth taking the extra time to get this really clean and ready to go. Okay, now I'm going to get a fettling knife, make sure it's clean. I'm gonna put my template on there. Perfect. So that should give me enough right there to cut out my base. So I'm gonna use my fettling knife and I'm cutting straight down at a 90 degree angle, slow drag. And I'm gonna take this guy and I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna get all the way through. Let's do that again. I'm gonna take this guy and put it in a Ziploc bag so it stays wet until I need it later. I'm putting that over there where it'll stay wet. I'm gonna cut out the rest of my slab. Okay, so make sure my knife is totally clean. I'm gonna come across here, keep everything lined up, and I'm gonna cut it straight down all the way and make sure I can feel the fabric, feel my knife hitting the fabric. And also when I get to the end, I put my thumb right here so the clay on that corner doesn't stretch. So this extra clay I can save for later, I can put away, I can end up using it for my handle. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in a bag. I'm gonna come over here, do my next cut. And same thing when I get to this end, I'm gonna put my finger there as a stop to keep the clay from stretching. Okay, nice clay. I'm gonna save it. I can use it for later. Just gonna turn my clay, do my last cut. Okay, one of the benefits of making a paper model too is that you have perfectly straight edges with 90 degree corners. So I'm putting my finger right there to keep the clay from stretching. Okay, so I have my stop cut out. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I need to bevel my corners where my slab's going to meet. Okay, so this is what I have for my mug. Now, if I wanted to roll on a stamped texture, I could put it on right now. I could come in with um, any of the stamping tools that I have. Um, if you're using a smaller stamp, like one of these, I like to use that after it's put together. If you're using a stamp that's a big sheet, then I would roll it on here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I do anything else is, I'm going to see, do I want this texture? Okay, so this is the texture of the piece of canvas that I've been using. And if I don't want it, a way to get rid of it is to set it on top of the piece of paper I use for my template. And I can take, I can take my rib and just quickly smooth that canvas texture out. Or I can leave it. I think it's kind of an interesting interior texture on a mug. Um, but you are gonna be sticking your hands in there when you're shaping and modeling your cup. And so it's not something that is gonna be consistent across the inside which is why I usually get rid of it. Okay, so I've just used my rib, smoothed it out, gotten rid of all of that unnecessary texture. So I'm gonna leave my piece of paper underneath and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this so that I have a beveled edge. And I will show you what it does, but a beveled edge is a slanted edge. And so what I wanna do if I'm looking at my piece of clay is I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle in my slab like that so that when I join my slabs together I'm not butting together two flat sides like this what I'm going to be joining together is two diagonal sides and that gives me more surface area to join them and makes it a stronger connection okay so the way I do that is I hold my knife at a 
45 degree angle to my clay and I just carefully and slowly come across. Now, on a piece of canvas, you're gonna need to hold the canvas with this finger right here so that as you are cutting, the canvas stays where it's supposed to stay. I also have to put my thumb at the bottom so the clay stays where it's supposed to stay. So now I've just cut off a diagonal edge on my slab. There it is. Now, the easiest way to do the next one is to take this right off turn it over this way and do the same exact thing again. That is going to give me the shape that I need. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to cut it at the same 45 degree angle and I'm holding the canvas with my finger so that it's easier. I also have a 45 degree angle tool but honestly I end up using my knife more than that tool. So now what happens when we put these together is, check this out, we have a lot more surface area for that connection than we had before because they're both cut at a diagonal angle. So you can see how that's going to give us a better connection. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to slip and score this together. Keep in mind as you are moving your slab around that you are not deforming it or stretching it too much. If you get any finger marks, I just kind of brush them off real quick. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to aggressively score my piece. And my clay is very plastic. It's very soft and easy to manipulate. So I'm going to cross hatch here fairly deeply because I want a good connection. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to cross hatch this way. I'm going to cross hatch the other direction. Sorry, hatching one direction and then the other. Okay. Making sure that's deep enough. Now, I've done my scoring. Time for some slip. I'm just going to get my little slip on my finger and I'm going to wipe it on there. Now, anytime you're using slip, you always wanna make sure you only put it on one side and you don't wanna get everything soggy and slobbery wet, okay? This is the glue, but we don't want our glue to squish out and get everywhere, okay? So there's my slip. I'm gonna clean my finger off before I do anything else, okay? The other thing is you always wanna make sure your hands are clean. So if you're getting any little clay bits or wads, you're gonna brush them off. And then I generally will have a piece of paper towel so that I can also make sure there's just no bits of clay stuck to my hands. Okay, now we're gonna connect these. So, one of my little tricks for getting a better connection is this. So you can line it up perfectly, right? So they line up exactly like that, or you can overlap just a little. I have found that if I overlap them just a little, so I have a stronger connection for my mug. This is a big chonker mug. Okay, so I'm gonna start by pressing them together. And anytime you're pressing clay, you wanna support it on the inside while you're pressing from the outside and same thing vice versa. So now I'm gonna start with my thumb blending down that connection point. Okay. And so once I have it nice and comfortable, I am going to put my whole arm inside to support it and keep it round. Okay, so, and this, like I said, is a big chonker mug, so my whole arm fits inside. Okay, so, this is an XXL mug because that's how much I like coffee. So I'm getting that connection built without deforming the shape of my cylinder. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my arm in there to support it. Okay, I'm gonna use my rib for a little smoothing and I'm gonna use a paddle because I love paddles and they work really well. Just gentle, gentle on that connection point. Use my paddle to paddle that seam together because I want that to look perfectly blended, 
like there was never any 